I was born under hypnosis. My mother was hypnotized back in 1958, and that was the first year that hypnosis was sanctioned by the American Medical Association. So my birth was facilitated by a medical doctor in a hospital setting under the influence of hypnosis. So I was literally born in trance and my mother laughed and joked with the doctor the whole time and didn't feel a twinge of pain, even though she had no narcotics or other pain relieving substances. So I feel like I was born to do the work. Wow, yeah. So, um, I think it explains why I'm a space cadet too. <laughs> Kind of eternally in trance, but <laughs> I use hypnosis for virtually everything, whether it's uh, being comfortable riding my bike uh, for long distances or writing a story or creating a painting or cooking vegan food. I always go into trance, a light state, similar to the state that one goes into in, in a good meditation session. Mm -hmm. And that helps ideas to flow. It helps me to regulate my own physical comfort, it's its good for everything. So that's the kind of thing I'll be sharing at Camp Etna and that I share just about every day of my life. Um, well, the fascination with hypnosis was lifelong. Since my mother raved about it, I was always curious. And then I became um, interested in self-hypnosis in my um, late teens and started practicing it all the time. And then, as many people do, I had issues with alcohol and, and smoking. And I realized that I could use the same self-hypnosis that I was using for creative endeavors and athletic endeavors to easily walk away from bad habits. And once I did that, I wanted to help other people to do it. So I eventually, after years of using it myself and seeing how great it was, how much it helped me to set goals and actually attain them, I decided to become a professional hypnotist and um, that was something that changed my life forever because I really developed a skill set that would help with all kinds of conditions and from there, that would have been about almost 30 years ago, from there I went on to open a hypnosis school in northern Minnesota and then to bring it to Boston later on where I taught hypnosis for about 14 years straight and ran seminars on all different ends of hypnosis, not just smoking cessation or weight loss or the usual things, but creative arts development, sexual healing and enrichment, um, going into states, altered states for all kinds of creative endeavors and sports, and also for pain management, which is one of the, the biggest things that I've done because so many people are in pain and it's the whole, opioid crisis now makes it even more important that I continue to help people to manage pain naturally. But it, having been in pain myself for many, many years, I, I came to realize that opioids uh, in any form, they just stop working. So trance never stops working. All you have to do is use it and it takes you into a better place where you can regulate your own body chemicals, your own systems, and where you can get your body to flood itself with endorphins, which is better than any outside drug. So it's kind of why I got into it and why I stayed with it, but it's also fun. It just really feels good and helping someone to heal, helping them to find their own power, um, seeing them get, you know, going from maybe being depressed and in a slump to lighting up and being happy and thriving it's just nothing better than that. So it's been like a lifelong buzz on, if you will. That thing of seeing them shift, making the shift, helping them find their own magic wand. A lot of people, when they go to a hypnotist or go into any kind of healing facilitation, they expect somebody else to wave a magic wand over them. And one of the first things I want to teach people is they're the ones with the magic wand. It's right there inside them. So I like to explain that in a way that is so concrete and so feelable by them, so usable that they realize, wow, well, I came here to get this kind of a change, but now that I've found I, my own power and that I have the ability to wave this internal magic wand anytime I choose, then I 
I've helped facilitate a gift in them that they can use for the rest of their lives and maybe even in future lives. Depends on someone's belief system. That's my favorite part is knowing that I'm planting, helping to plant a seed. Granted, they've got to water it. They've got to cultivate it. They've got to weed it. They've got to do all that work. But I'm in a position of being able to plant that seed and to be encouraging and to create a safe space for people, whether it's learning how to meditate or overcoming a horrible trauma. You know, the work is kind of all the same to me. It's always led by spirit, which is another great thing, you know, to be able to co-facilitate with infinite spirit and, and with various guides. It's just all beautiful. You know, it's all, it all lights me up doing the work.